Tornadoes affect the United States year-round with an average of about 1,000 tornadoes reported annually across the country. While tornadoes are most active during the spring and autumn seasons, wintertime is no stranger to these destructive forces of nature. But the upcoming winter is not going to be like the winters we've experienced recently since we are entering a strong El Nino, unlike the triple dip La Nina which has been stuck for the last couple of years. In this video I'm going to explain how this different climate pattern will affect the location and frequency of tornadoes and severe weather across the country. Before we proceed with the video, let's just refresh our memory on what El Nino actually is. El Nino is the warm phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation and is associated with a band of warm ocean water that develops in the equatorial Pacific. While this oceanic anomaly is very far from the U.S., it changes weather patterns closer to it, which in turn has a ripple effect across the globe. El Nino typically peaks during the winter months, causing an amplified subtropical jet stream into Mexico and the southern U.S., carrying all the way through into the southeast. This brings much more moisture and therefore bigger storm systems to those regions. At the same time, the polar jet stream is pushed farther north, keeping the coldest air well north into Canada. This allows the northern United States, including Alaska, to experience abnormally warm and dry weather. If we take a look at the latest Climate Prediction Center outlook for December through February, we can see how much this resembles the typical El Nino influence. Wetter than normal weather is favored from Southern California all the way up the East Coast, with the strongest signal across the Gulf states and Deep South. In regards to temperatures, much warmer weather is favored across the Northern United States, with generally average temperatures currently expected for the Southern half of the U.S. But El Nino is not the only factor. The ocean temperatures in the Atlantic, more specifically the Gulf of Mexico, matter too. Warmer waters can help fuel stronger storms just like we see during hurricane season, but that principle also applies during the winter. With an amplified subtropical jet stream moving over these warmer waters, this can cause further development of the storm, which can increase the flood and severe weather risk when it impacts the southeast U.S., especially Florida. This is a graph which shows all the flood events in Florida depending on the phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation. On the right side of the graph we see the amount of flood events in a strong La Nina as opposed to the amount of flood events during a strong El Nino, which is the bar on the left side of the graph. We can quickly and easily see how much more flooding we see during an El Nino. Next up, let's talk about some significant weather events in the past which have occurred during strong El Nino events. First off, one of my favorite examples is the 1993 Superstorm. This was a truly extraordinary system, so much so that it was dubbed the storm of the century. While producing major snowfall from Alabama all the way up to Maine, and even setting barometric pressure records, it was also responsible for producing a potent squall line. This squall line intensified into a derecho, producing wind gusts over 100 miles per hour shortly after midnight on March 13th across Florida and even Cuba. The line of storms was so powerful that it not only produced hurricane force wind, but also caused major storm surge along Florida's west coast. When the squall line moved inland, multiple tornadoes developed and caused additional damage. Another example is the winter of 1997 to 1998, which was one of the strongest El Ninos on record, more specifically the February 1998 tornado outbreak. This severe weather event affected the southeast U.S., especially Florida. Unfortunately, multiple strong and intense tornadoes would touch down and become the deadliest Florida tornado outbreak on record. There's one more El Nino winter which I think stands out. The 1982-1983 El Nino was yet another one of the strongest and most devastating El Ninos in recorded history. It caused widespread flooding in the southern U.S., much drier and warmer weather for the northern U.S., and extreme drought in Australia and Indonesia. But one interesting event that happened during that El Nino winter was the Los Angeles, California tornado. The weather pattern that produced this tornado was actually quite strange, and it didn't feature the typical conditions that we see in Tornado Alley. Unfortunately, the tornado occurred around 8 a.m. Pacific time on March 1, 1983. It definitely wasn't a massive tornado, but for Southern California standards, it was quite severe. It did cause quite a bit of damage, and it was classified as an F2 tornado. 
Now that we've reviewed some information on the typical El Nino pattern and its implications, it's time to talk about what it means for the winter of 2023 to 2024. If you live in this red shade which extends from the west coast all the way to the southeast, I think that severe weather and tornadoes is a possibility. One important thing to note is that even though you are included in this red shade, that doesn't mean you will receive severe weather. It just means that the risk will be greater than normal. The darker red shades are the regions which I think will be even more susceptible to tornadoes and severe weather this winter, which includes California and much of the south central and southeast United States. Lastly, the greatest risk for severe weather and tornadoes this winter will be from East Texas through parts of Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and of course Florida. If you do live in the highest threat area, definitely be prepared for a wet and stormy winter. With that said, that will conclude this video. If you enjoyed this winter weather forecast and breakdown, definitely consider subscribing since I will be uploading my official winter forecast soon. If you would like to see one of my preliminary winter forecasts which goes over the effects of El Nino and many other climatological anomalies, you can click on one which will show up on your screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.